We have Cholamandalam Investment uh, and Finance joining us. Disbursement growth was 21% uh, on a year-on-year -year basis. AUMs also saw a healthy traction. Asset quality deteriorated uh, in this quarter. Arun Se uh, Selvan is President and CFO at Cholamandalam. Uh, he's with us uh, right now. Mrs. Selvan, great to have you with us here. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, so when you don't... Uh, sort of miss on asset quality for many, many, many quarters. And then you have a quarter where, uh, you know, there is a slight miss uh, that uh, becomes uh, front and center. Could you, uh, could, could you explain what happened, sir? What caused the pain in uh, Q1 with regards to credit costs and NPS? See, uh, if you look at it pre-COVID, this is always the trend. In Q1, there will be a little bit of slippages, but then in Q2, it will over at similar levels and Q3, Q4, it will improve. We were better than uh, the pre-COVID levels when we closed the financial year FI24. And uh, from there, what we are seeing is a little bit of, uh, you know, slippage. In a few basis points, it has come off. Uh, and NCL has also been higher, you know, so that we provided for that. Most of these asset slippages has happened in stage two and a little bit in stage three. We are confident that this will get pushed back by the end of Q3, Q4 this year. Mm. So what would be, uh, what, what, I mean, would you want to put a number to it? What would, uh, where do you expect to see credit costs by the end of the year? Yeah, Q3, you will see an improvement. Q2, we will certainly strive to make it better. But uh, I would say uh, that, uh, you know, Q2 always tends to be a little bit of a poor quarter because of monsoons as well as uh, inauspicious months, etc., which brings down economic activities a little bit, thereby reducing the earning potential of our customers. So we, we don't see a lot of rollbacks happening in Q2, but Q3, Q4, we should see them happening, especially in the context of better monsoon predictions so the rural economy is expected to go up uh, with with uh, also the elections uh, results you know favoring a rural spend so these things would augur well for us in the third and fourth quarter of this year so in terms of disbursement growth what are we looking at uh, it's almost 22 percent disbursement growth that you've seen in this quarter what is the expectation for the full year fy25 we would keep it in the similar range of 22 to 25 percent. Uh, we will love to see. I mean, if you recall, I've said we will be able to tell more clearly once we get over the Q2 because it reflects the monsoon's impact. And still, we are dependent on monsoons. A large part of our book is still vehicle finance, which is rural based. So we will wait for it. Yes, we have been having a good traction. The good advantage is we are having multiple products, and even within the businesses, we have multiple sub products which helps us to scale up, scale down, depending on the growth in the economy of those specific segments. That's, that's where we are able to push the 20 to 20% 20 plus disbursements. And we are confident we will continue doing it and uh, you know, reach a 25% numbers of disbursement. Yes. Okay. All right. Mr. Selvan, hi. Good morning. And good to see you in as always. Give us your inputs on the rural market. Because, you know, various sound bites are coming in that suggest there is still a lot of stress out there. What is your understanding, your analysis on ground? So we are seeing a reasonably good traction. Yes, it could be better, but uh, it is uh, still, uh, you know, the monsoon will have to, you know, comfortably settle in. And thereby, sometimes excess monsoon also is a pain. So that shouldn't happen. So we should have the right levels of monsoon. MSP prices have been, you know, bettered. And uh, rural housing subsidies has improved. These things augur well for us, especially in the home loan segment where we are focusing on that three to four type of cities and villages, towns. So these are positives for us. And we look forward to having a better traction in these segments uh, as we move forward in this year. Okay, all right. And give us a couple of more numbers. Then rural is not in a very difficult spot going by what you're saying. Give us your yeah. sense in terms of NIMS, if you could give us a range on the guidance and also your credit cost. Just wonder number. Uh, what should it look like on an average for the year? See, we stick to our original projection for the full year, which is a be like the 7 point uh, you know, 7.8 percent on the NIM, and uh, the credit cost would be in the range of around 1.2 to 1.3 or 1.35 percent, and the rota to be in the range of around pre-tax rota to be in the range of around 3.5 percent. We are working towards that. We will. We are confident of achieving it as we move into the second half of this year. 
Uh, yes, we had a little bit of a higher credit cost in first quarter, but that is always the trend if you go back pre-COVID level. So. Mm. Mr. Selvan, uh, you know, your cost of funds came down about five basis points uh, on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. Uh, you know, not just you, but one has been picking up that the RBI is getting a little worried about uh, banks lending to uh, NBFCs. Uh, you know, recently there was, of course, increase in risk weights on uh, loans to NBFCs, but generally uh, becoming a little more tighter, uh, formally and informally. Could you tell us if what, what is what is happening there and what can we expect? Yes, uh, see, we have, we have a large part of our borrowings coming from banks, but what we are doing is we generate a lot of priority sector assets, which has got a good appetite with banks, and the higher risk weightage don't apply when the banks do on lending towards priority sector assets. So we have been spared of that higher risk weightage, you know, cost thereby, and there is a, a large large amount of demand for priority sector assets, which we are capitalizing both by way of getting an on lending sanctions from the bank as well as doing securitization. You have seen over the years the securitization book has increased substantially. Now it constitutes around 18 to 20 percent of our borrowings. And that's where we also focus on. Apart from that, we have also done ECBs uh, at finer rates. We wait and get the better rates on a fully issued basis. So that helps us to keep the cost down. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Selvan, uh, so w what is, could you tell us what is the proportion of bank lending uh, in your uh, overall mix and uh, <clears throat> X of priority sector on lending which you described, how much is that, what is the dependence? See, around 48% is our bank borrowings out of the total borrowings, uh, again of which more than, uh, you know, uh, I would say 66% of that would be priority sector borrowings uh, from the banks. Okay. okay, got that. Uh, so overall for the commercial vehicle sector, what kind of growth are you looking at? Because, you know, when we speak to large OEMs, uh, we get a sense that there is about an 8% growth that the medium and heavy commercial vehicle sector has seen 8 to 10%. Uh, you cater to that segment in a big way. So what kind of growth do you see? And between pockets, right, MHCVs, LCVs, uh, intermediate commercial vehicles, where do you see maximum traction now? See, we expect that in the current year, the growth would be more in the light commercials and the mini lights uh, because uh, we've seen the growth happening in heavies and uh, the heavies will slow down a bit in the current year is the sort of our internal view. Uh, that That is where you, you are seeing that the manufacturers talk about lower growth because for them, heavies constitute a large part of the business. Fortunately, unfortunately for us, heavies don't really constitute a large part of our business, primarily because we can't compete with the fleet operators, uh, with the banks who lend to the fleet operators, because the yields are very fine there, especially in a regime where cost of funds is high. So we, our focus has been more on lights, mini lights. So that's been our stronghold, and we continue to, uh, you know, uh, do uh, a lot of business in this segment. We have also been focusing uh, on the used business, especially in the used segment, which is the sub tenure vehicles, which is where we saw a lot of traction because of the shift from BS4 to BS6, bringing in a lot of cost variance between the pricing of the new BS6 vehicle versus a old BS4 vehicle of a lower vintage. So we, we have been capitalizing this. Of course, we have also been growing on the passenger vehicle cars as well as uh, in the two wheelers. Here again, the focus for us has been more in the rural rather than in the urban, especially in the uh, entry level cars rather than uh, high end cars. So these have kept our engines growing, uh, uh, you know, running better as compared to some other competition. 